Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about a key highlight IUPAC nomenclature. Okay, so before I start, I would like us to compare the common names of these two compounds with the IUPAC name so that we know the difference. Okay. All right, so we have this. Okay, so the common name for this would be, first we need to confirm how many carbons are here. You have one here and you have two here. Okay, so this is two, or we can go the other way uh, because we would want to give this a lesser priority of number, right? So we'll number it this way. This will be one, this will be two. All right, so two carbons, that's 18. All right, so when we're talking about a key halide, that would be ethyl. Now the common name of this would be ethyl, and then this, iodide. Okay? All right, so this is the common name. Now, what of the IUPAC name? Now, in IUPAC name, what we are going to do is number this one, two. We have the iodine attached to carbon one. So we'll start by saying one iodo, okay? Not iodide now, as in the common names. IUPAC name would be iodo. If this was chlorine, for example, it would be chloro. If it was bromine, then it would be bromo. If it was fluorine, um, it would be chloro. Okay? So that is how you start for IUPAC naming for this particular compound or for archivelites. Now, since you're talking about archivelites, we have one iodo thing. So this is the IPAC name for this compound, why this is the common name. Now, another example would be this one. So we know the difference before we dive into the IPAC naming. Now, for this particular one, Now, when you see something like this with whatever it's attached there, you know you are dealing with an isopropyl. In this case, what we have, so I'm just going to write it out for the two. Now, for the common name here, of course we start, we already know it's an isopropyl, so it will start with the isopropyl. So common names will usually start with the alkyl group. It's just like saying acyl halides. Now the acyl group first, then followed by the halide. The IUPAC name is more like the halo akin. Okay, it's more like the halo akin, which is another name for acyl halides. So halo comes first before the alkene. So when we are dealing with IUPAC nomenclature. The name that should be in our head is the halo arcane, the halo before the arcane. When we're talking about common names, then it is the acyl and the halides that should be in our head. So in this case, the isopropyl comes first, followed by the bromide. Okay? So you have your common name. So for this one, if we follow this rule, halo arcane, your halo first, which is uh, the bromo. But then before that, on which carbon is it attached? You number this one, two, three. So on carbon two, so you have two bromo, and then arcane here is the isopropane. And you have your IPAC name for this compound. So I hope this comparison helps you understand what IPAC nomenclature is about and what common names is about. So it's totally different 
It shouldn't confuse you, just know the true rules. And that is why I said it here so that you know the true and be able to, you know, differentiate them in future when you see them. Now let's go into the IUPAC nomenclature proper. Okay, so we're asked to name this acute halite. And um, we'll start by numbering them. And usually we start from the carbon that is closest to the halite, okay? And this is it, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you start from here, you have one, two, three, four, five. That is a big number. We should give the lower number to the attached group. So that is why I started numbering from here. Now we know that this is two. All you have to do is to say two. Of course, we now have Romy and the rule hello king is what will help you when you are naming. And the hello is the bromo in this case. And then the alkane, you have six as your parent uh, carbon. So what you will have would be as a. So the name of this compound would be two bromo as a. Okay. Now the second one is this. All right, so the second one is to name this compound, is to name this acrylate. If we start from here, we'll have one, two, three, four, okay? If we start from here, we'll have one, two, three, four, five. So you see that it's going to give uh, this five. But if we start from here to give this three and give this four, so this way is better because you end up having just three and four as the attached group against four and five. Okay, so those are important to note. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. All right, so seven is our parent carbon, which in this case would be heptene, all right? But before that, we need to look at the attached group. We're considering the, we have two attached group here. We have the methyl group and we have the bromo. So bromo, the B comes first when we talk about alphabetical order. Okay. And um, because of that, you will have your bromo first. So you will have for bromo, then three methyl heptane. The heptane is plus a seven. Okay, so this is the name for this compound. The next thing will be to name this one. Okay, we are asked to name this compound. Okay, so here we can see that we have three different things attached. Okay, and if we are to number and start from here, we have one, two, three, four, five. If we start from here, we have one, two, three, four. So starting from here is better. All right, so five is our longest chain, which is telling us is the pentane as the parent. And then we're starting with this. B is obviously first in the uh, alphabet. So we start with one bromo. Okay, now we have two bromo, so you don't have to do this. So 
So what you do is one four dichromo, okay? Then two chloro, okay? So forget about this, pentane. So this is how you name this particular one. Okay. The longest chain is five. The attached groups we have at this point we have one. Okay, one for dibromo, telling us that there's two of the bromos. Okay, and then the chlorine is here. All right, the last one I have here would be this. Much easier. So this one here is one, two, three, or one, two, three is the same. So you can go either way. So this will be two, three, so di, chloro, who have four as the longest chain, so it will be the chain. So this is how you name a key halides. Now, if you are asked to draw two chloro, three, four, dimethyl, same. how will you draw this? So basically what you just do is to first Look at this. So I'm going to be drawing the line structure. Now this starts with this dot as one, then two, three, four, five, and six, right? Now you have six written out. The next thing is to look at all of this in front. It says that on second carbon you have chlorine. Now let's count it. This is one, two. So here you have the chlorine. Then on the third and on the fourth, you have two methyl groups. So you have the three here, you have a methyl group, and this is how you represent that. And here you have another methyl group. So that's it there. You have your compound, which is two chloro, three, four dimethyl azine. So this is the structure for that. Okay. Now, what if you are asked to draw this other one? You're asked to draw three chloro, three ethyl heptane. Okay, I'm going to be doing both the condensed structure and the line structure. Now, if this is heptane, as a parent, you just have to write out the full carbons, seven of them, because that's what F represents, right? Now we'll write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then the next thing will be to put in all these groups. The first one is on the top carbon. This is a top carbon. You have your chlorine there. On the same top carbon, you have an ethyl group, which is CH2. CH3. All right, so after this, then you fill out all the hydrogens to make up four bonds for carbon. So each of the carbons should have four bonds. So fill it up and then we are good to go. Four, four for each. Now we have this as a condensed structure for three chlorine, three ethyl heptene. Okay. All right. So, what if we were to draw the line structure? I actually find line structures easier because you don't have to draw out all the hydrogens. So, now with the line structure, you just put a dot here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then confirm you have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. Good. Complete. Now on the top carbon, this is it. Drawing. And same top carbon now. That is tricky. So in this case, you need to draw it out. That's one and then two. And you have your ethical. Okay. Attached. So you have one, two. And you have your three chloro, three ethyl heptane. Okay, so that's basically how you do it.